Welcome to another Crash Course in Warframe. Today we're going to be taking a look at Valkyr, the little ball of anger that came coupled with Damage 2.0 in Update 11. Now Valkyr is assumed to be a product of the Zanuka project or some other project headed by the evil Alad V where they specialize in ripping apart Warframes and building exceptional vacuums. Now keep this in mind as we're going through some of our abilities because some of them do feel like slightly altered versions of other frames, current, and retired skills. But first, let's take a look at these stats because they are weird. No, seriously, they're weird. She has a medium starting health, which is which is fine. Uh, she has 100 starting energy, maxing at 150 when needing 30, which is kind of okay considering her spammy skills are cheap, but then we see the lowest shield count in the game of 50, coupled with the highest armor available at 200, but even with a steel fiber mod uh, and the changes to the armor functions in update 11, that 400 potential armor comboed with no skills that regenerate health still make her feel really squishy. But that's okay, because if you're in a bind, Ripline will save you. Maybe. This ability has two basic functions, okay? It either pulls you or it pulls a target. When it pulls a target, it ragdolls it and deals a decent amount of damage for the cost, and if it doesn't kill a target, it will be temporarily incapacitated as it takes a moment to stand back up, which is more than enough time to get some shots in. Now, if the target's another player, it just inconveniences them for a moment, or several moments, depending on how much of a dick you feel like being. Now, the non-trollish fun part of Ripline is that it allows you to kind of Spider-Man your way around maps, and I say kind of because it only remains attached for a couple of seconds but that's usually enough to change your trajectory or pull you away from danger or completely bypass a gigantic annoying ass room. Now, like most frames, Valkyrie has loads of potential with most of her abilities to create these sort of highly specialized builds. With Ripline, for example, you can drop a heavy impact mod with a, with a melee that does substantial slam damage or an AoE effect like the Obex and get some relatively interesting results. Now, I'm not saying it's extraordinarily useful, but for those of you guys who like to run 300 meter snow globes, Valkyrie might be something to look into. Next up is Warcry, and this ability does a few things. It increases you and your nearby teammate's speed, increases armor, and decreases the overall speed of nearby enemies. Now, the speed increase to the Tenno is somewhat noticeable, but coupled with the speed decrease to surrounding enemies is actually what makes it feel like a skill. Now, on the armor side, the increase really doesn't benefit anyone that isn't Valkyr and to a lesser extent Frost or Rhino. It just doesn't feel like she is that much more durable and she wasn't that durable to begin with. Now the problem with this ability is that a group of enemies anywhere but in the highest tier of play is going to be instantly annihilated by any number of your teammates skills or just, you know, the expected bullet sprint you get from having a team of people that are actually doing something. If this ability were perhaps an aura that affects enemies near Valkyr no matter where she moves then I can see its viability. Otherwise, you can probably just keep it slotted for, you know, this super neat animation. Rawr. Paralysis is a mixed bag amongst the community, but still fairly interesting due to its ability to synergize with a slew of other skills and mods, and it's spammable. So here's how it works. You activate it and a lot of angry just bursts out of Valkyr doing damage modified by the amount of shields currently available to her, which, depending on your build and current combat situation, can either be really effective or not even worth the 5 energy cost. Now the cost is that it halves your current shield value, which means spamming it will quickly leave you effectively naked. But the utility aspect of this, and for some this may be a bit of a stretch, is that it temporarily stuns the enemies in range. Now it doesn't last long, but a well placed paralysis or 7 can save your ass if you're cornered and out of shields, or if you just need to support the team with a group of heavies, keeping them CC'd, right? Now this skill also synergizes well with any frame's ability that gives you any kind of temporary invincibility or protection where you're able to regen shields and fire off a few blasts for some cheap AoE damage. A good example of this would be Hysteria, which is basically god mode with some pretty hefty drawbacks. The ability grants Valkyrie invulnerability, but it takes away all of her weapons in exchange for some neato Omni-Tool style claws that you'd presumably use to beat up enemies if you could catch them. But when you do, you can expect to deal some pretty good damage per swing. Really handy with Infested, yet you're still susceptible to energy draining Ancients. But that's okay because you can still pick up energy orbs while the effect is active, allowing you to recast it over and over again. And since your shield can charge during this effect because you're not taking any damage, right? You can cast Paralysis as often as you'd like as well. Now, when the effect wears off, you can sometimes, you might take a little bit of damage, which is honestly hardly noticeable unless you've somehow managed to come out of it with no shields thanks to, uh, you know, Paralysis spam. 
But again, the biggest drawback is that its primary offensive function, the Wolverine Claws, right? Rely on the game's melee system, which can sometimes have you looking like you're shadow boxing when you're desperately trying to see through this angry cloud to properly connect with your target. The invulnerability mechanic alone makes it worth it, but a small movement speed boost or melee lock-on mechanic in exchange for, because, you know, give and take, right? Man, why don't you go and take some of this, some of this duration off my hands? It kind of lasts a bit too long, to the point to where it's like, you know what? I, I'm already, I'm already over it. I kind, I'm no longer hysterical, okay? I've kind of calmed down a little bit, and now everything's still red, and I still my claws out. Yeah, I kind of, I've forgotten why I was even mad in the first place. Take some of that and give me just a little bit, maybe a little bit of a speed boost or something, and then we'll call it even, and then we'll call it a true ultimate. But, I'm not gonna lie, the, the vulnerability function does make it worth it. You're not gonna want to take it off just for that alone. Valkyrie starts out clumsy and difficult to manage due to low shields and poor skill synergy, but once you get her potatoed and beyond, it becomes an incredibly malleable soldier. Hysteria and grapple, excuse me, a uh, rip line <laughs> is easily a must-have skill in any build regardless of content with their biggest flaw being the weak base shield strength and that will need to be compensated for in higher level content. And this coupled with the bonuses gained from several different mods means that you'll be setting aside a number of slots and may even need to resort to forming ability slot in order to maintain shield strength, health, durability, right, and functionality and still keep that fun factor in these highly, highly sensitive and tactical environments. Valkyr is the perfect poster girl for the campaign to get DE to create a system allowing the combining of mod mechanics by players to create the ultimate build. And I say this not because she would benefit the most, but because, like some of the players, everything she wants and does is expressed by yelling, screaming, and aimlessly punching thin air. 